How to make simple silicone tubing adapters. Part 23, making silicone tubing adapters for my model steam engine test plant. I put this test plant together to make it quicker and easier to test engines on the bench. Using compressed air is very convenient, but live steam tells you things that compressed air doesn't. For ease of use I use thick walled silicone rubber tubing which is sold as automotive vacuum tubing and it's ideal for the job, I use it all the time. What I'm going to do is remove all of the existing pipe union fittings and make some special brass adapter fittings to take the silicone rubber tubing. You can push the silicone rubber tubing directly onto the threads but where gas is concerned it's better to make sure that you get a good seal. This is the gas canister adapter which actually leaked when I fitted silicone rubber tubing directly to the thread. What I should do really is spend ages making a whole collection of adapters for silicone rubber tubing, just like I have boiler plug adapters. But to be honest, I buy those from Chris English at CM Engineering. Because of the way my brain works, mass production and machining is something I'm not really good at. Here though, I'm going to bite the bullet and make four silicone rubber tubing adapters. You've just been watching me facing across the front of this piece of brass hexagon and it's always a good idea to do that so you work with a flat surface for drilling. The next part of the operation is to use a centre drill, this one in fact, and drill a centre hole in the end of the bar. The camera's not in the best position to see this but never mind, here's a finished centre hole in the end of the bar. The next part of the job involves using a 1 8 of an inch diameter twist drill to drill quite a long hole to the full depth of the twist drill flutes down the centre of the piece of bar. Owing to using a centre drill first, the 1 8 of an inch hole is accurate all the way down the bar, at least for the length of the twist drill flutes. The next part of the job involves using a tapping size drill suitable for a quarter inch ME type thread. In this case it's a 7 seconds of an inch twist drill. I'm not going all the way through, I just need to go a very small amount in. Maybe just a little bit deeper than this. As I'm making more than one of these parts, it seemed like a simple idea to make a mark on the drill bit. Which leads me into top tip time. I'm using a Sharpie felt tip pen to actually mark the twist drill. First of all I mark one side as you can see here, then I remove the twist drill and mark the other side, so I'll clearly be able to see how deep to drill the hole. The gas valve adapter thread needs to be a quarter by 32 threads per inch. I could do this by hand but it's just quicker under power. Please note though I am running the lathe very slowly, using back gear. Before removing the part from the chuck I thought it would be a good idea to check the thread's accuracy and I'm pleased to say that the fit was near perfect. This clip shows the gas canister adapter screwed into position. I'm happy that this part of the operation is okay, so it's time to part off the component. This very thin parting tool is ideal for these operations, particularly using brass, I can part off at high speed. One down and three to go, I pull the piece of bar out of the chuck to start the work on the second one. Don't worry, I'm not going to show making all of them. I'm just going to give you an idea of how boring mass production is. This is only the second one. The steam turret unions and boiler gas jet fitting need to be quarter by 40 threads per inch. And here, using a quarter by 40 threads per inch tap, I'm doing just that. This tapping operation raises a burr on the end, but I will remove that once the job is finished. Here, once again, I'm parting off the second piece which very quickly is detached from the piece of bar and drops it to the chip tray, which thankfully I cleaned out the other week, so we'll be able to find the component. I turned the parted off component around in the chuck, and here I am reducing the diameter to quarter of an inch to fit inside the silicone rubber tubing. The inside diameter of the silicone rubber tubing is M6, which is a good fit on quarter of an inch pipe. Here I'm rounding the end of the pipe freehand. Don't forget it's not a precision component. What I'm doing here is machining two shallow grooves in the part. Not to secure the silicone rubber tubing, quite the reverse is to make it easier to remove it. 
It's very important not to have any sharp edges when you use silicone rubber tubing, so I'm removing any sharp edges with a piece of emery cloth. Once I've finished the first of the components, I clean it up on a piece of 400 grade wet to dry sandpaper. The first adapter is complete and this is the one for the gas canister valve. I always use Loctite 542 thread sealant to seal the threads. And here I'm securing the fitting to the gas canister adapter using my Barco spanner, which is an excellent quality tool with the benefit of the jaws being wider than a normal small spanner so they don't mark the brass. I'm really sorry about this image, I actually kicked the tripod and moved it out of position, but you get the idea. Now I need to make the second of the fittings that I made with the quarter by 40 thread onto this. The boiler's twin gas jet adapter. This particular boiler has two water tubes, so it needs two gas jets. I'm going to make a separate video about this. Once again by using Loctite 542, this part is going to be perfectly gas tight on the fitting, so I can fit the piece of silicone rubber tubing. The cable ties on the tubing are not really necessary, but without them the gas leaks slightly, although that was before I made these adapters. I need to fit two more of these adapters to the taps on the steam turret. I haven't showed the manufacturing process, it's identical to what you've just seen. Here once again I'm using my small Barco spanner to tighten up the adapters, having coated the threads in this stuff. I don't recommend using too much Loctite 542, only a small amount. If you use too much you can block the pipe, or worse, you can spill it onto paintwork or varnish and it will remove that. In the next episode of a model steam engine test plant, I will be testing an engine. This is a Stuart number 9. Although this engine runs very well using compressed air, I'm sure that running it on steam may show some problems that you cannot see with compressed air. That's it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.